Hello, my friends, and welcome once again to another episode of Tony's Bits on the Side. Now, Tony's Bits on the Side, if you don't know, is a separate uh, playlist on the Tony's Comfort Kitchen uh, channel, where I do a whole manner of side dishes, uh, starters, desserts, tapas dishes, a whole manner of small dishes that don't usually feature on the main, the main channel. So uh, that's it. Today, I am doing a dessert. Uh, because I have an excess of eggs from my, my two chickens. <laughs> uh, and I'm doing creme brulee. So uh, I'll go through the ingredients very quickly first. Uh, I have six egg yolks. Uh, a bottle of, well not a whole bottle, but <laughs> I'm going to use about 30 millilitres of Cointreau or, or any uh, orange liqueur. You could use triple sec or, or anything like that. Um, we've got some brown sugar, which coats the, uh, the, the custard after it's cooked. Uh, that'll be later on. I have some um, vanilla sugar. Uh, if you can't get hold of this, then you can just substitute it for uh, a few drops of uh, vanilla essence. Uh, I have, I think it's 90 grams of um, sugar, general sugar, castor sugar, and a litre of cream. And that's it. So we'll put everything together and we'll crack on. So first of all, we mix the eggs and the 90 grams of castor sugar together. It all gets mixed up. Then we add the liqueur. This is optional, you don't have to use this. Um, but anything, a bit of orange water as well would work. So a capful, or around about 30 millilitres of uh, liqueur, orange liqueur. You could use almond uh, liqueur as well if you want. Mm. It's, a, it's a wonderful smell. Then open the sachet of vanilla sugar or open your bottle of essence. Put that in. As I say, if you're going to use the essence, just use a few few drops you don't need you don't need an awful lot and then we have the cream as I said there's a whole litre of cream in here just give it a good shake Let's take some filling <laughs> and then just as you can imagine just mix all that up Sometimes it takes a bit of starting off. Sometimes give up the whisk and use one of these. Just get it going. Ooh, lovely patterns. So basically this is just a, a custard we're making. Now you could use um, uh, vanilla pods, take out the seeds, heat up the, the cream, do it that way. That's probably the more traditional way of doing it, but this is just a much quicker way because you've ended up going to have to um, cool the cream down before you add it to the eggs anyway, so it just takes more time. And if you can get access to vanilla sugar or, as I say, vanilla essence, then it just speeds the whole process up. And that's it all mixed up. Now then, we need to put this into ramekins, um, which is not easy to do, but what I'll do, I'll put all this into a jug, I think, which is the easiest way, and then pour them into the, the ramekins then. Get our tray with uh, the ramekins in. Now then, carefully pour the custard into each ramekin, up to not entirely full. Now 
then it's just a case of filling the, uh, the dish with hot water about halfway up. Should do. And then this goes into an oven at about 160 degrees Celsius. I think that's 320 Fahrenheit for about 30 to 40 minutes. I'll check on them after about 30 minutes and uh, I'll see you then. Okay, so uh, that is them straight out of the, the oven. Um, they were actually in there longer than I uh, anticipated. It was about uh, 45 to 50 minutes that they were in there. Uh, the way to check to see whether they're cooked or not is to apparently stick a knife into the custard and if it comes out clean, which that's relatively clean, <laughs> they are wobbly, but then that's because the custard is very hot. Uh, that will uh, cool down and, and solidify. <clears throat> Talking of solidifying, we have to leave them for uh, uh, a few hours, if not overnight. Uh, overnight is ideal, to be honest. Uh, take them out the, the, the water tray, put them in the fridge, let them cool down entirely, and then we'll put the sugar on top. You can't do it before the custard is cooled down properly, as it just won't work. Um, so uh, I should have said this dish is actually, or this, this dessert, should I say, is better done um, a day ahead. So, uh, so that's it. So I will see you lot uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Bye for now. Okay, so here we are 24 hours afterwards. Uh, these have been in the, uh, uh, in the fridge all that time, so they're, uh, uh, they're nice and cool and settled. And as you can see, pretty solid. Now all we need to do is burn the, the sugar on the top. So for each one, I will use about, I'm using brown sugar, by the way. It didn't have to be, but I'll just use it. About one to about one and a half teaspoons of sugar. Oh, and one little tip that I, that I found about five minutes ago <laughs> um, is to just push the edges of the, the custard down a little bit because the, the middle tends to, to sink down um, more than the edges. What happens when you, when you create the, uh, uh, the sort of caramelized uh, sugar, it all tends to uh, float to the, to the center of the, the, the dish where you want it to be pretty much uniform all the way around. So uh, just push down the sides a little bit, or at least that's what seems to work for me anyway. Um, now then, in order to burn this, there are different ways you can do it. There, you can put it under a grill, uh, which I find takes a long time, uh, or you can buy one of these expensive chef's blow torches. Um, but I don't do that. I, uh, I do, if you can see this on the camera, I do a bit of plumbing and I have a, a just a general blow torch. Can the camera pick that out? No. Um, and I just, so I use it for plumbing, I use it for creme, creme, uh, creme brulee, as you can see. Now then, don't put the flame too close if you are using one of these, because it'll, it'll burn it too quickly. You want to have some sort of, I hope you can hear me uh, over this, you want to have some sort of control over it, so don't keep the flame too close. Turn the, the uh, ramekin around. Don't touch the top of the ramekin because it will be absolutely red off. The bottom will stay cold. Just gently melt the sugar. And if you do as I say and push the edges down so it's all pretty level surface, it shouldn't and all just float to the, to the center of the, the ramekin. I'm doing this, as you can see, on top of my metal uh, griddle plate. Uh, I wouldn't do this on top of your, uh, your worktop. <laughs> Unless you want worktop brulee. Mm, it's 
careful, don't touch the top of that ram again because it is hot. I do. And that basically is it. Now then, that obviously is too too hot to uh, to smash open with your spoon. <laughs> um, you're as well putting these in the, the fridge just for five minutes. As you can see, I can hold it, but I don't want to hold the, the top part. So I'll put that to one side. And in the great tradition of Blue Peter, here's one I prepared earlier. Now then, so here we go. I'm gonna, gonna crack it open. Oh, look at that. Mm. Oh, look at that lovely custard inside. Ooh. Right, let's have a try. Ooh, it'll fall off. Mm, mm -hmm. Oh. That is fantastic. Mm. I like mine very burnt. As you can, as you can probably tell. Yeah, you might like yours less burnt than that, but there's something about the the bitterness of that really burnt sugar with the uh, the sweet custard underneath, and that uh, that little bit of um, uh, orange liqueur we put in, oh, that adds to it as well. That really does make its presence felt. We didn't put much in, oh, but have another one. Mmm, ah. mmm. Give them a go, my friends. These are absolutely delish. So, as per usual, if you can like, comment, and subscribe, that would be massive. And I will see you in the next video. So, take care my friends, take care, peace and love.